Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here for DP Review TV. And today we're doing our roundup of entry level full frame cameras. All the big companies have dogs in this race now. You've got the new Nikon Z6, their entry level camera into this market. Of course, the Sony A7 III, it's been around for a while, but excellent camera for the price point. And Canon EOS R is the only camera that Canon makes right now in the mirrorless full frame market. However, I would say, although it's slightly more expensive, its price point is still competing with the Z6 and the A7 III. Three. So join us, we're going to rank these cameras in a whole bunch of categories and hopefully give you a better idea of which camera might suit you best. Okay, well while you're trying to find me in the frame, let's talk about image stabilization. It really has become a staple feature in modern photography, whether you agree with it or not. It's got great applications for handheld photography, long lens support, as well as video applications. So let's rank these three cameras. All right, so in last place, this is a very easy one. It's the Canon EOS R. I mean, a complete lack of in-body image stabilization just doesn't make any sense to me. And on top of that, you've got the brand new 28 to 70 and the new 50 mil, and they both don't have any image stabilization in the lenses. Canon does have some of the best lens-based image stabilization on the market, but you have to get the lenses that have that support. And with IBIS, you get that support with any lens. No, 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 Jordan, stop the Christmas music way too soon. I am a firm believer you wait till December before you put your lights and your trees up. This is November, way too soon, cut it out. Although, my wife does insist that we put up the lights and tree right away, so I guess I'm gonna do it anyways, aren't I? Where was I? All right, the number two position, I'm gonna give it to the Sony a7 III. It does have IBIS, which is a big plus there. On top of that, there are some lenses with super steady shot built in, and it does work in conjunction. Overall, it's a very usable platform. It was a close battle, but it loses by just a thin margin. All right, our number one position, I'm gonna give it to the Nikon Z6. I mean, this is Nikon's first crack at IBIS in a camera. It's on a full frame sensor and it's in their brand new mirrorless and frankly, it's awesome. It also integrates really well with their VR lens system. So I think Nikon did a great job here. For video applications, it's also incredibly smooth. So it nudges out the Sony, although they do have very similar capabilities, but good on you Nikon for a great first showing. All right, let's talk about lens selection next because lenses really are such an essential part of this whole process. Now, to be honest, Nikon and Canon are coming to the party late, but they also have an extensive line of lenses that they can adapt from their SLR lineup. So let's see how they all stack up. All right, in number three place, I have to give it to the Nikon Z6. You know, let me explain why before you tear me to pieces. I do love the image quality. I think they're fantastic lenses, but the lenses the Nikon's released with the Z series of cameras, although very useful, just aren't that terribly exciting. We need more lenses and that's gonna take time. And although the FTZ adapter does work flawlessly, you only get autofocus with their most modern lenses. So overall, it's good, but we need more. In the number two position, we've got the Canon EOS R. Now, although the new RF lenses are very expensive, they're also very exciting. They decided to come up with more pro-level lenses right off the bat. Their adapter is also excellent. It has very good support for the vast majority of EF lenses on the market. And I, I think the only reason it keeps them out of the number one place is they are still late to the party. And I have to go with what lenses are available right now today. Number one position, I gotta give it to Sony, how the tables have turned. When it was mirrorless Sonys against Nikon and Canon SLRs, everybody derided this company because of their lack of lenses. The fact is they've been in the game a lot longer and now they have tons of lenses across many different price points and they do make excellent optics. They also have great support with third party manufacturers making lenses, lots of adapters, and the fact is you can also use Nikon and Canon lenses on these with some functionality. So I am more excited about Nikon's potential now to make brighter lenses and Canon's potential just because they do always make such great formulas, but you gotta give it to Sony. They've got the selection. They've been in the game long enough to do it. All right, so it's time to talk about autofocus, especially when we kind of enter a realm where image quality is getting very comparable. Jordan and I feel that autofocus is really one of the more important deciding factors in a mirrorless camera today. In third place, I have to give it to the Nikon Z6. And on the positive, I love the single point autofocus, the touchscreen interface is great, and the joystick for the autofocus is also an excellent feature. It's really the consistently inconsistent continuous autofocus performance. Not a very high hit rate that I'm finding, slow frame per second shooting, and on top of that, I think eye autofocus is one of the best innovations we've seen in AF, and this camera is lacking in it. In our second position, we've got the Canon EOS R. Here's what I love. Amazingly accurate single point autofocus, especially in low light situations. Does a fantastic job. On top of that, I love the touchscreen interface, but there is a lack of an autofocusing joystick. I would have liked to have seen that. 
The tracking is a better improvement over the Canon SLR's intelligent tracking, although that's not hard to do. What I don't like is we still have a somewhat inconsistent continuous autofocusing capability, but overall, this camera is a really good showing for autofocus performance. So that brings us to our winner. It's the Sony a7 III when it comes to autofocus. And this is just because of very good, consistent, continuous autofocus performance. Single autofocus is excellent. And of course, it has by far the best implementation of a pupil eye-based autofocusing system. And I do really rely on that a lot if I'm shooting portraits or even street photography in action. The only thing I would say, somewhat weak touchscreen interface. Nikon and Canon both do this better, but it does still work and it is a passable system. Hey everyone, it's Jordan. Um, Chris has me in a playground, I guess just to make me look as awkward as possible. I don't really need your help, Chris. Uh, let's talk about video. We're gonna explore the space together. <laughs> in last place, we've got the Canon EOS R. And at first I thought the perfect vlogging camera. Look at this, we got a fully articulating screen. Hi, Chris. Hi. We got dual pixel autofocus, the gold standard for video autofocus. But then I realized there's a huge crop when you're shooting 4K. There's no inbuilt stabilization with this. And the dual pixel autofocus is somehow a step back from what we saw in DSLRs. I mean, I'm a forgiving, generous person. And no, this, not. this would all be worth it if there was sharp, beautiful 4K coming out of this. But what we're seeing is actually quite soft video. In second place, we've got the Sony a7 III, and this isn't a surprise, Sony knows video. We get a beautiful 4K super sampled full frame image on this, and wonderful Super 35 recording at the same time. 120 frame per second slow-mo, good autofocus log recording. This is a very capable video camera. It was my favorite full frame mirrorless for shooting video, until something amazing happened. Are you sure I look badass doing this? Yes. Who would expect in first place Nikon of all manufacturers. I was kind of blown away. The autofocus performance on this is excellent. It's got a flat picture profile that I really like if you don't want to spend a lot of time grading. But if you hook this into an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5, you're getting 10-bit recording, access to the new N-Log profile, and really excellent dynamic range. This is a video powerhouse, and it's very surprising. It's more capable even than its big brother, the Z7. Okay, it's time to look at ergonomics and handling. We're talking about controls, dials, menu systems, and of course, this is gonna be very arguable and highly subjective, so these are my opinions. All right, third place, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna give it to the Canon EOS R. There's a lot to love. I like the grip, I like the dial controls, I like the float rotating screen. But things like the multifunction bar, they were implemented and they were just kind of a flop. There's no AF joystick and the AF on button's kind of in a funny spot. The on off switch also takes up a lot of valuable real estate and you don't have that many customizable buttons. So compared to the other cameras, I'm gonna give this third place, but you might be the kind of photographer that doesn't need any of that stuff. In second place is gonna be the Sony a7 III body. There's a lot to like about this, but in my opinion, there's a couple things that detract from it. So I wanna mention those first. Uh, the grip is in my opinion, the least comfortable. I think Canon Nikon do it much better. And the menu system, although much improved, is still, I think, better with Nikon and Canon. The touchscreen interface here is also quite limited and it's laggy. So out of the three, that's also the worst. However, the camera does have very good customizability. I like having the autofocus joystick and uh, dual card slot. Huh? All right, number one in my opinion, I'm gonna give it to the Nikon. Very familiar to Nikon users, but I love the big grip. I love the position of the AF on button. The autofocus joystick is great. Everything's in a very well thought out place. The locking mode dial is excellent. I love the touchscreen interface. Vastly improved, very customizable. And I think the biggest thing here, it's the EVF, especially if you're coming from an SLR. This EVF is high res. The resolution doesn't drop when you're focusing. Uh, it's just beautiful and bright and easy to use, and that's very important when you want to use a mirrorless camera instead of an SLR. All right, it's time for the image quality comparison, although let me go on the record as saying all three of these cameras take brilliant images. And yet, it does make a difference in your art. Let's see what that is. All right, I sound like a broken record, but the Canon EOS R is gonna be in third place. Can I first just go on record though as saying that I think image quality is probably the least important benefit to worry about in a camera? It really comes down to so much more than that. But that being said, the Canon EOS R, it just has the oldest sensor out of the bunch and that has some implications. It has 30 megapixels, it's definitely the highest here, but can I also go on record as saying that resolution is just not that important, especially for most people that this camera price range is aimed at. 
24 megapixels is plenty. You get a little bit more resolution, but what it really hurts is the older sensor gives you a lack of dynamic range and low light quality. The other cameras can do better there, and I think that's more important for most people. Did you bring my ice skates for me, Jordan? Is that also my job? That is also your job. You didn't bring, oh, fine. Okay, well, then I guess we'll get back to the video. Number two, image quality. I'm gonna give it to the Nikon Z6. Although this is an excellent 24 megapixel sensor, very comparable to the best 24 megapixel sensors out there. And really it comes down to something more technical. You know, when the phase detect array, I believe, it actually creates a pattern which shows up as banding. But you're only gonna see this when you really boost exposure and or boost shadows. On a technical level, it does hurt your dynamic range. So that puts this in a firm number two. What a beautiful sunset, hey? What a nice poignant way to end our competition. And that does leave the Sony a7 III as the number one for image quality. And I think, you know, as much as we can give credit for Canon having excellent, amazing lens capability, we then also have to give the credit to Sony for being, you know, the world's leading sensor manufacturer. And that does pay dividends in their cameras. These sensors are top notch, great dynamic range and low light performance, 24 megapixels of resolution, which is plenty for a camera in this class. And I really think that Sony have done a great job at improving their color science. These cameras are certainly beautiful picture takers. So number one, this is the Sony. All right, DP Review TV viewers, that's it for our rankings. And there's so much more to a camera beyond just where it ranks, okay? All of these do a very good job. But let's talk about these three cameras specifically, okay? I mean, first off, the Sony a7 III. I mean, it is definitely by far the most well-rounded and versatile camera. Great image quality, very nice control structure, great video capabilities, and lots of lenses. We have to appreciate that Sony has been in this game the longest now, and that is paying off for them. And I would say that if you only had a couple Nikon or Canon lenses to, to worry about, or maybe you're coming into photography fresh, you're looking for your first camera, the Sony a7 III makes a lot of sense. And there really isn't an area that it's weak at. So if you want a camera and you're not quite sure where your photography is gonna go and what you specifically wanna do with it, the Sony gives you that flexibility. Now the Nikon Z6 also scored very well and Nikon is very obviously appealing to their loyal Nikon users here. If you have a current Nikon SLR with a lot of lenses, is it worthwhile switching over to the Z6? You're not gonna save that much space. It is a little bit slow continuous autofocusing. It is a little bit slow in its shooting rate. And so that might not be the best choice for you. Although I will say that the Z6 with Nikon lenses on its adapter will focus quicker than say putting your Nikon lenses with an adapter on a Sony body. But where I think we have to really appreciate the Z6 is just what they've done with the video capabilities. If you're a Nikon SLR user, but you want a camera that's gonna also output excellent stellar video capability, a true hybrid, and you wanna use your lenses, that's where the Z6 makes a lot of sense. The video is astoundingly good. It's even way better than the Z7. Now the Canon EOS R, I don't hate Canon. It's nothing to do with that, but we have to admit that the technology that Canon's dealing with is just a little bit behind everybody else's and that is starting to show. And on top of that, I feel like the Canon EOS R is probably more aimed at an amateur market than maybe the other two cameras are capable of. Still, we are getting access to a huge line of lenses and the new lenses that Canon are coming out with on the RF mount are very exciting and have tons of potential. I'm very excited to see what Canon comes out with next in this mirrorless world, but there's still glaring emissions. I mean, the lack of IBIS is huge. The fact that they've kind of really let their video game go by the wayside as well. The 10 bit features added there, but it's hamstrung. The quality's not very good. And otherwise the video is quite soft. I mean, if you've got a lot of Canon lenses though, this camera really does unlock some potential there. It does make sense if you've got that, that you could move into a mirrorless body here. And you might also be the kind of photographer that honestly doesn't need IBIS or doesn't feel that they need video. And then this Canon EOS R might still bring you a lot of joy. But as a reviewer, I still have to look at the technical capabilities of this camera and they are behind. And thus it does deserve its third place finish. Okay, well the sun is literally setting on our video right now, so it's a good time to end it. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. Go to dpreview.com and check it out because we do have full reviews already out for the a7 III and for the Canon EOS R. And I think the Z6 is going to be out very shortly, so you'll be able to compare all of these things for yourselves with a lot more detailed information. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave comments below. Please check out our Twitter. Subscribe to our channel. Check out our Instagram as well. And uh, when the sun rises again, we'll be back to you with another great video.